All right, we've spent the last few videos looking at causal diagrams, ways that we can take our ideas about how we think the world works and writing them down in a diagram uh, that's going to help us figure out how to, how to estimate the causal effects that we are interested in. So today we're going to talk about how we can actually do that. How can we actually identify those causal effects? And what I mean by identify is that when we look at the relationship between X and Y, we want to be sure that that is isolating a causal relationship. And that's what I mean by identify. If we look at a relationship and we say that's a causal one, that means that I have identified the causal relationship. So then the question is, what do I need to do to make sure that I am identifying a causal relationship? And the causal diagrams are going to help us do that. And the way they're going to help us do that is by helping us think about paths between X and Y. You'll notice that when we write down a causal diagram, we have a lot of different variables there, we have a lot of different nodes, and we have arrows between the nodes. And this implies there might be different ways to get from one variable on the graph to another variable on the graph. Those are going to be called paths. Any time that we can get from one variable to another by sort of walking along the arrows of the diagram, that's going to be a path. So let's take a quick example. Let's talk, use this example that we used before with tech companies, intellectual property, lawsuit spending, and profits. So this is the, the diagram that we came up with. We have three variables, being a tech company, your profits, and the amount that you spend on IP. And let's say last time we were interested in the effect of being a tech company on your profit. Let's say that this time we're interested in the effect of those IP lawsuits on your profit. Because we can imagine we might get a strange result, right? If we look at the relationship between IP lawsuits and profit, we would probably find that companies that have more lawsuits also have more profit. But that's weird because we think that having to spend a bunch of money on lawyers should lower your profits. And what this suggests is that maybe there is what we are going to call a back door. So let's think about all the ways that we can walk the path from IP spending to profit. And there's two ways, right? We could either go directly there from IP spending to profit. That's going to be what we're going to call the front door. That's the part that we are interested in. It is part of the it is what it is a path in which we start at IP profit and follow arrows that only point away from it. Right? We're only going to look at variables that point from IP profit to other stuff. There's no backward facing arrows here. That makes it a front door. Right? You're walking out the front door. We also have a back door because we have a second path here. We can walk the path from IP spend to tech and then back to profit. Notice that this path contains an arrow that is pointing towards IP spend. That tells us that it is a back door, right? If you start with an IP spend and you're in your house and you're trying to get outdoors and that's where profit is, and you walk out the front door, you're starting in the house and you're walking out frontwards. But if you had to go backwards at some point, well, you're going out a back door. You're crawling out a window. You're going through the backyard, something like that. And what we want to do to identify the effect that we're interested in is make sure that we've closed all the back doors so that we can be sure that you only came out the front door. That's what we're trying to do. In order to be able to identify these effects, what we're going to want to do is write out all the paths that we could possibly be walking. And then once we've written out all those paths, we want to close all the back doors while leaving all the front doors open. If we can do that, then we know that we will have identified the effect. We've made sure that when we saw you go from IP spend to profit, that you only did it by walking out the front door. You didn't take any back doors because we closed them. What I mean by closing is we're controlling or adjusting in some way. So let's take a slightly more complex example. So let's take this graph right here. We're interested here in the effect of drinking wine on your lifespan. You've probably read all sorts of newspaper articles about whether or not a glass of a day is going to make you live longer and be healthier. So we can imagine a couple of paths that we could walk here. So for example, uh, wine might have a direct effect on your lifespan. It might make you healthier. Maybe there's something in wine that makes you healthier. And so we have that arrow. However, maybe wine is a substitute for taking other kinds of drugs. Maybe the more wine you drink, you might be less likely to take some other kind of drug that might be more harmful for you. So we also have a line going from wine to drugs and then from drugs to your lifespan. However, there's some other things in there as well. Maybe the, uh, your initial level of health. Uh, maybe that affects both the wine and your life. Maybe if you are a very sickly person, you're not going to drink wine, but you're going to have a shorter lifespan. Also income. Wine costs money and it costs more money than most other kinds of alcohol. And so people with higher levels of income are going to be more likely to drink wine, arrow from income to wine, and they might be more likely to live longer, arrow from income to lifespan. All right. Also, we might think that health and income are correlated for other reasons. So we have a shared uh, common cause we're going to call U1 that points arrows at both health and income. 
All right, so we have our causal diagram. We want to write out every single path that we can walk from wine to lifespan. We're going to start here at wine. Obviously, a path from wine along this arrow to lifespan. Okay, that, so that one's so far so good. We also have an arrow from wine to drugs to life. Now, both of the ones that I've done so far have been front doors. All the arrows are pointing away from wine. But we also have some back doors, and we're going to want to make sure that we get every single one that we can do. And some of them might be hard to find. So we have one, wine, to health, and then back to life. Right? That's a back door. We could also go wine, to income, to life. That's going to be a back door as well, because we have arrows that are pointing towards wine. But don't forget about that U1. We can go wine, to health, to U1, to income, to life. We could also go wine, to income, to U1, to health. To life. And that's going to be the full list that we're going to have there. And that's going to give us every single path that we could possibly walk. Now, once we've got these, we want to isolate, well, which ones are front doors and which ones are back doors? All the ones that have arrows exclusively pointing away from wine, those are our front doors. I've highlighted them here in red. We also have some back doors that include at least one arrow that's pointing towards wine. So we figured out what are our front doors and what are our back doors. Once we figure out what the front doors are and what the back doors are, we can figure out how we can identify the effect that we're interested in by adjusting or controlling for variables. In other words, holding those variables constant. If we can statistically hold them constant or adjust for them in some way, we are effectively going to close any paths on which those variables appear, whether they're front door paths or back door paths. So we'll get later into exactly what statistically it means to adjust or control for something, but let's just imagine that we can do it. We can, we can control some variable, we can hold it constant, we can compare people with the exact same level of that variable. So let's imagine that we're going to control for health. We're going to only compare people with similar levels of health before they started drinking wine. So if we do that, it's going to close any path that has health on it. Now, this path does not have health on it, so that one stays open. This path does not have health on it, so that one stays open. This one does, so that one's going to get closed. This one does not, so that stays open. And then finally, we have these two down here, both of which have health on them, and so these are going to be closed as well. Every path that has a variable that we adjusted for on it is going to now be closed. So we still have an open back door. Now, how do we know when we've done enough to identify the effect we're interested in? Well, as I mentioned before, we want all of our front doors to be open, and they are here, but we want all the back doors to be closed, and we still have one open back door. So in order to identify the effect of wine on your lifespan, we need to not just adjust for your previous level of health, we also need to adjust for your income so that this one will be closed as well. And it's fine that we have two adjusted variables on the same path here, not a problem. And so once we adjust for both health and income, we've closed all the back doors while leaving all the front doors open. And so if we now look at the relationship between wine and lifespan, after adjusting for income and health, assuming our diagram was correct, we will have identified the causal effect of wine on your lifespan. Now, keeping in mind, we don't necessarily want to control for everything in the model. There are reasons not to control for variables. One of them is called collider bias, and we'll talk about that in a later video. The other one is called post-treatment bias. Basically, if you control for a variable that's on a front door path, it will close that front door path, and so we won't get the entire effect of that variable. Imagine for a minute that, in fact, there is an effect of wine on whether or not you take drugs, and there's an effect of drugs on your lifespan. Uh, and part of the actual reason why wine might extend your lifespan is because it causes you to do fewer drugs. Now, imagine that we controlled for drugs, and we only controlled for people who, had, who took the same amount of drugs. All right, so we're comparing people who take the exact same amount of drugs. That would basically say, hey, you know that part of wine that increases your lifespan because it makes you take fewer drugs? Well, we're going to ignore that. We don't think that counts. But actually, we do want it to count. We want to know the effect of wine on your lifespan, and that's one reason why we might have that effect. And if we control for drugs, we're going to be getting rid of that part of the real true effect, which we don't want to do. So it's not just important to control for everything that you can in order to close the back doors. You also want to be careful about leaving those front doors open. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.